to be in the yeah. house. Have you watched it? There's the street? a <laughs> somewhere there. I don't know. They're the professionals, so I would just really just know have your doing. gear ready. You might need to go in an emergency downstairs. <laughs> check check your professionals' faces, see if they're making any bad faces during the time that they're working. That way, you can gauge whether or not it's going well or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to a very professional Cardano over coffee space today. There will be no unprofessional silliness going on. Oh boy, yeah, there's no such thing as professional in me, so. <laughs> I am <laughs> play it loose and from the hip every day. <laughs> it's been brought to our attention now. Our spaces in Kodano is, are not professional, so we we must we must <laughs> correct. Well, we did ask some hard hitting questions the other day. I mean, <laughs> what the heck? Come on, let's go, peeps. Give us a break. This isn't very professional of you talking about how professional our show is. This is true. It's completely unprofessional that you're talking about the unprofessionalism that we are not displaying vis-a-vis the judgment laid on to by our end user or viewer about our professionalism. Oh, my God. So, Dante, you're trying too hard. <laughs> I was. I ran out of it. I was like, where am I going with this? I just assumed that I'll be fine. Somewhere about halfway through, I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I'm not going to get through this. It's not going to work out. <laughs> Welcome to Kodano Kod- Kod- over coffee. We are here Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m. UTC for two hours. We typically have two guests, about 25 minutes each, depending on how professional we are that day. Um, who are our guests today? Today we have Kabuki coming from Japan. And Jason. Jason Matias. I don't know how that didn't spell right. It's Jason Matias. I was like, I know her, Marsha. Is she coming today? Jason Marsha. Wow. <laughs> okay. It's so Matias. Jason's uh, brother from another mother. Got it. Domo Arigato, Mr. Rivato. Yeah. And then if you remember, the, the J- Japan NFT project had been here before. They actually, um, before their sell, uh, if you remember the lady that was here, I can't remember her name. I'm horrible with names. Um, but they sold out and they wanted to come back. So I said, sure, come, let's talk. Lit, as the kids would Very say. Nice. Um, yeah, and so... you're actually pretty good with names, to be honest. I've noticed. No, you're so. not. Um, uh, pretty good. Professional about how horrible I am. <laughs> he either gets <laughs> the wrong or he, he says some random silliness like, the girl from Japan, the guy from Serif, 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 what's that one? Whatever, right? Um, anyways. No, you guys are on top of your game today, I can tell. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we've got that going on. But until until then, the, the first guest is not for another 26 minutes. It's Benter, 30 minutes. Coming up, let's chit chat. Whatever you got on your mind. Blocks. I got a I got a question and and I I called TCT and we're gonna have this conversation. I I actually called TCT yesterday, right? Um, and I said TCT, I got a question for you. I'm looking I'm looking at this IBTC, which is a th- synthetic, right? So lots of risk involved. However, the price of this BTC right now is like just shy of ten thousand dollars, when the actual price of Bitcoin is sixteen thousand. If they succeed and over time trust is built into that protocol, will the price of that Bitcoin reach the price of normal Bitcoin? Mm. Now, that's a question. What did TCT say? TCT, what did you say? (laughs) I said, yeah, theoretically, that should happen. Um, but it definitely all comes down to trust, right? Um, yeah. What was I going to say? What's that word? Uh, logically, right? If people trust the protocol, um, then Bitcoin is a good price and they'll buy it until it gets uh, closer or pretty equal to the actual price of Bitcoin. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of risk involved there, right? Um, because we just seen how many protocols fell and just kind of disappear. Uh, 
So going into this play, I know that there's a lot of risk involved. So it's just one of them degen moves that I'm doing in DeFi that Lido usually does. Yeah, I'd like to hear what DA says. But yeah, that's the thing. And, and people might never trust it fully. So it might never reach the same price as Bitcoin. But uh, <clears throat> I, I'm curious to see. I think they have a lot of trust uh, so far. And I think if they continue it, uh, then it might get pretty close. What up, DA? Jim, Jim. I'm not trying to change the subject. I just uh, been a long time listener, and I just wanted to come up and say I appreciate all of y'all for running this uh, show for as long as y'all been running. Um, been very valuable to me and my growth. And I just I've never been up here. Just wanted to come up and um, say thank you, and I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you uh, stopping up and saying hi. I mean, that's pretty big, you know. You've never been here. You hang out a lot. That's cool. Appreciate it. See, that's professional right there, Lido. Did you witness that from DA? Super professional right there. So I want to see if I can get Rand up here because there's been a, there's been a change in some dates. Rand, can you come up here and talk for a second? Like, I need a I need a video clip of you telling the story of what's going on. Let's go. Sweet, yeah. And while we're waiting for Rand to come up, anybody have an idea of what to do with Indie Token? Uh, I have not done any research on Indigo, and I'm curious. What, to what can you thoughts. do with it? I mean, you, would it be best hold it just and hope price go up? It? Well, yeah, I figured that much. But it, if I wanted to interact with the protocol, um, I was given five Indie Token as a member of or delegated for Lido Pool through Tosi Drop, which is interesting that they're doing that. And um, yeah, so now I got five Indie, and I'm like, okay. What do I do with it? Damn, I didn't know that. I would have went and claimed mine. Shit. Yeah. I didn't realize well, you that. You can still get it. It's still available for anybody that, you know, you got to go in there and um, get in there and, and uh, you know, put in your stake don't, address. Don't forget to put like that it. on your taxes there, Block Jock. Mm, mm. Is this recorded? Damn it. It is. Okay. I guess I got to. But yeah, I'm just anybody, uh, maybe just staking it. Maybe that might be that way. Avoid IL but enjoy a, a few fees along with an upgoing price, maybe. Hopefully. So okay. w what is the overall sentiment of uh, Indy? Um, wh what are your thoughts on it? Um, honestly, I, I got I sold mine as soon as I got it, um, but I, I don't know what the overall sentiment is on the token of, of the protocol overall. So I've been waiting since 2018 to be able to buy Bitcoin on Cardano. I don't give a shit if it's a synthetic and it's not real. Because <laughs> um, will you ever really have Bitcoin on Cardano? So I've done the whole open to collateral debt position, this uh, CDP, right? I left it in there for a while. Then I took it out. And it wasn't a lot. It was only like maybe three or 308 or worth of Bitcoin and with the and I was at 185 percent collateral so it wasn't like it might have been like 0 0.001 Bitcoin or something right it wasn't like a crap load but I just wanted to see how it worked make sure that it worked properly and it all worked smoothly um, I have not messed around with their synthetic uh, dollar yet at all uh, there's plays to be made um, if you can tolerate the risk because there's definitely risk involved also um, being that it's a synthetic. So um, TCTs probably can talk about it a lot more than I can. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I haven't, <clears throat> Oh, we're talking about Indigo. Sorry. I was reading something different. Uh, but I mean, the sentiment seems good, right? Uh, the team's pretty uh, active in the community. They answer a lot of questions. Um, the, you know, the only thing I look, the thing I look for is more, um, <clears throat> like technical information about, uh, you know, like actually seeing the open source contracts. And then I think a big thing is going to be like, uh, how they go about governance. Uh, like right now there's a lot of talk about like fully decentralized governance. And I don't think that's the case, um, so I think a little more honesty or like insight around how that actually works is important. Um, 
But I mean, I like the team. The protocol seems to be working great. And I think as long as they continue that and uh, actually do move towards like uh, smart contract governance in the future, once they're pretty uh, certain that their community is robust enough and active enough, then uh, I would definitely be interested in using it. TCT, so, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Brian. I have uh, a, just a for TCT. Up. You had you say something a lot, and I just want to kind of bring it to light, right? When people say that decentralized governance, I think that some people have a different definition than others. When you say decentralized government governance, right? Not only is it like a, a voting thing where I can go in and vote. But when that vote happens, if you're fully decentralized, whatever we voted on, whatever action needs to take place is going to automatically take place. There's not a third person there who can stop that action from taking place. Is that is that what you mean by fully decentralized? Yes. And I and I um, I think it's wise to start out um, having the voting right separate from the actual action. <clears throat> but that's what is uh, that's what's occurring right now, right? Um, even quote unquote on chain voting, there's no direct effect on either the protocol or the treasury. Um, so you vote, and then there's either one person with their public key or multiple people with a multi sig wallet that actually build and sign the transaction. Uh, so, like you said, the votes don't actually cause any effect. You still have a central party who you know, can decide not to do that or can lose their keys or, you know, can bend to regulation. Um, so when you have smart contract governance and uh, the smart contracts, you know, actually, you know, are written correctly and there's no back doors, then the effects, whether it's a protocol change or, you know, a spending transaction from the treasury are submitted with the proposal, right? So that gets checked. Um, you can see the outcome because, Cardano has determinism. And then if quorum is reached, uh, all these parameters, right, that you set when you deploy the contracts, uh, then that transaction will end up in a UTXO on chain, and anyone can submit it just like a fully signed multi sig transaction, uh, it becomes a valid transaction that anybody's able to submit. So yeah, there's a big difference. Um, and like I said, I don't think it's wrong to go about it like this. I think it's very uh, I think it's the way you should do it, because uh, once you set those parameters, <clears throat> if you don't ever reach quorum, then you're screwed, right? You can't do anything. Uh, so in the beginning, it's probably important to, you know, really build your community, make sure you have enough uh, participation and like active, educated members. Um, but there is a big difference between uh, smart contract governance and just voting. Hmm. And I, DA, you can talk in a second. I just need to interrupt Epoch from doing his uh, tweet that I'm hoping that he's doing. Make sure you pin it to the top, Epoch. Go ahead, DA. Yep. GML. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask do you all think that um, IU, IUSD can be one of the quote unquote safe players as far as stables? Because um, you have projects and, you know, just everyday users that don't want to have to go off chain. Um, of course, I'm, I'm sure most of you all know that already, but um, do they have the looking, do they look like a potential long-term um, option for people to use as far as stable goes? I think only time can tell that, right? Um, there, TCT, go ahead. I think you were going to unmute yourself. No, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's time and trust. And then, um, you know, do you think, Jed will work because it's basically the same contract. You are, you know, over collateralizing that asset, right? To keep it stable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the system is, is a good system. I think we've seen it work for a lot of years. Um, and it's really comes down to like quality of the protocol and then like the trust that people have in it. So if things, yeah, are good. Then yeah, it'll, it'll work great. So let me ask you guys here in the audience, they, they have something in here having to do with, um, they're strongly suggesting to use a clean wallet, which contains few non-ADA tokens or NFTs. I would suggest why is that? also. Um, why? I mean, 
what are they not doing that they should be doing to no i don't think it's them i mean maybe they'll work you know work on optimizations in the future but like yeah. even eternal gets backed up if you have way too many assets in it it's just poor utxo management okay all right Everything works off of UTXOs on our blockchain block chalk. So if 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 you well, yeah or, I know, but it's you, the management user, of it, right? So if you as the user don't manage it properly, it's hard to interact with the protocol, and then you blame it on the protocol. But in essence, it's your management of the assets that you have in your wallet. Um, I have yeah, but the problem is is that I have one main wallet. Um, I know I can make a sub wallet in Eternal. That's fine. Uh, but I have one main wallet that I interact with with the ledger, depending on uh, whatever it is I'm I'm doing. Right, if NFTs, it's not really in that. How it, many it's, assets do you have on that wallet? Say, say it again. How many native assets do you have on that wallet? Maybe about twenty. Twenty. You're fine. You'll be fine. Okay, so it won't be anything dramatic, right? I was doing it with one wallet that had like 130 NFTs. <laughs> and Jesus. So other stuff. So, and it yeah, worked fine. However, I tried yeah. to do it with a wallet that had like 500 NFTs and it would not work. Huh. Yeah, I pull all that stuff off of there. I have main, I, I keep, I've gotten very good at organizing these wallets to make sure that I don't have a bunch of junk in there. And there's ones. certain yeah. settings that you should be setting on Eternal if you use Eternal to manage those UTXOs so you don't run into an issue like that. Um, there's That's just a, the advanced setting, correct? Because I, I do have that on. And then you have to set your bundles to 40 is, the mm -hmm. I think, the optimal number. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. I have one more question. Um, what... And these algorithmic stable coins, what dis um how can I say what security measures are put in place that disincentivizes um, people from maliciously trying to depeg um, the stable? Well, mostly the over collateralization, right? Um, is is there to protect that? I could be wrong, T C T. No, yeah, yeah. Just make it's expensive. Not not much uh, benefit for doing so. You know, I mean, you could, like, I guess technically you could try to short it, but what are you going to really gain, right? Because then you have to make, like, hope that people trust it again and get it back up to its peg and then sell it. You're probably not going to make that much. So there's not too much incentive as far as I can think of. Maybe Rand has some insights. So the bigger risk would be uh, more so widespread than just one individual trying to, it would have to be more of a widespread um, price action that could um, not get off its peg. I'm just trying to think of the, um, I, there's been a lot of discussions of um, b being backed by um, USD and algorithmic. So I'm just trying to understand the pros and cons of both. That's why I'm asking. The question. Yeah, algorithmic's technically technically much more risky because um, all it would take is like a dramatic price drop in the collateral for it to for everyone to get liquidated. Now there are safeguards, right? Where where especially in DGED, where they won't be able to mint more if it goes over a certain percent. So there are some safeguards in there, right? Um, so if it starts to, there's like a, what is it, 4 to 8% range or some shit like that? I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I think 400 to 800. Yeah, 400 to 800, sorry. That's what it is on Ergo, yeah. Appreciate it. So it has to stay in between those uh, percentage of Odover collateralized. And if it doesn't, you won't be able to mint more of a certain asset, right? right. So, And that's to make sure that you, the stablecoin holders can always redeem. For their collateral. Correct, yeah. And... and I'm not sure if it's still the case because I usually just buy it on a DEX, but on Ergo, if you go to like the SIG USD website, I'm pretty sure it shows you those percentages. Um, like if the reserves are at 800%, then it won't let you uh, mint 
the reserves and I believe I'll have to go look at it. It gets confusing, but yeah, uh, it won't let you mint stable coins after like a certain percentage to ensure that there is always collateral redeemable for the stable coin holders. Jed's confusing, but I, I understand it, but it's hard for me to kind of explain it. So I apologize. So when some when someone is redeeming um, Jed for Ada, is this a there's a burning that's taking place? Well, it depends on if they minted that Jed or did they just buy it off an exchange, right? If they minted it, they over collateralized, um, so they would burn it to get their ADA back. However, if I'm just a normal everyday user, I can go to a DEX and just buy that stable coin off of the DEX also. That's where the liquidity, and that's a big thing that I think the next hurdle that Cardano faces is just liquidity for these stable coins in a bear market. Um, it's going to be an issue, I think. I'm just thinking of a project, let's say a 10K project, um, they sell out and now they want to go over to Jed. Um, I'm just mapping out what, the, what does that look like? They're, they're now so trying they, to... They would have two options, right? They, they could go to the actual Jed protocol and mint new uh, Jed, but they would have to over collateralize that, right? I'm just going to pretend eight is a dollar, right? Just to make this easy. So a dollar for a dollar. So they would have to put in two ADA, or maybe it's three or four. I don't know the four. Four. They'd have to put four ADA in to get one dollar back by minting it, right? Or they could go to a DEX if there's enough liquidity, and say, "Hey, I have this hundred thousand ADA that's worth a hundred thousand USD, or Jed. I just want to buy that hundred thousand off of the market." And what would be the benefit of the, the minting part? Like if they decided to go the minting route? Yeah, see, that's the thing, right? The only real benefit is whatever like fees the protocol gives you for uh, holding that reserve currency. So, so like now Indigo Protocol, um, if you mint with them and then you put it into uh, a pool, well, go ahead, TCT. Maybe you were going down that path. No, because I haven't looked into the, the Indigo much, but you're right. Yeah, like you can lock that in the, what's it called? Like a stability pool and then earn fees. Yes, and you say say somebody gets liquidated because their collateralization isn't enough. You actually earn a percentage of their liquidation by being in that stability pool. So you, you're earning fees, right? So there's a way to earn fees off it. And in the meantime... The thing that differs Cardano from other blockchains, and, and there might be others out there that do this, but Ethereum specifically, is when you mint that IUSD or D, DJED, you still will have that, say it's 100,000 ADA, that'll still be staked in your stake pool. So you're still earning the interest off of that while you're holding the stable coin. Yeah, and just like... Something easy if you want to mess around with it. Like what I do on Ergo is when the price of Ergo pumps, I'll buy a bunch of stable coins, right? Knowing or assuming that the price is going to correct and go back down. And now I'm able to buy more Ergo with those stable coins, right? And I'll just sort of repeat that and long and short Ergo. So a project would just need to manage their risks. It seems like there's three options there uh, between... Uh, that they would have to choose because that could potentially be another way that they can earn without having to keep going back to their community and minting more uh, assets. Um, but of course, there's I mean, the risk there. If you look at most def like NFT projects, right? We're just going to say if they earn 200,000 um, ADA during the whole mint, right? They can take that 200,000 and put it into IUSD right now. Um, and then put it into the, and then just hold it, right? And assuming they, they have the USD now, it's, it's pegged to a dollar, they can mint it and over collateralize and then still have that 200,000 staked and be earning that four to 5% on 
right? So it's a, it's a way to earn income, even though you're in a stable coin. And you don't even have to do all that if, if you think the price of ADA is going to go up. You only put half of it in as, as a, you have to, as a project, kind of look at what your needs are as what you're spending monthly, weekly, whatever the case may be, and build a budget out. And I don't think we've seen projects, a lot of projects, NFT projects doing that, um, where they have a budget to, to spend in the future. I think they've all been holding it in ADA because they haven't had an option other than taking it out of the ecosystem to like Coinbase to sell it. Now they're going to have more options. Yeah, these would be some good questions to ask uh, up, up and coming projects because um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people aren't uh, necessarily educated on these things. Um, so I think this would be good for people to start tapping into um, just way more options than to just keep minting other assets um, to get more um, capital from your community. So I appreciate y'all. I'm just definitely looking into this stuff more and learning more about it. So thanks for the responses. Thanks, DA, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, quick question. Did anybody tweet the space out? I'm looking to retweet. I have. So I'm curious as to, I was going to mention that as well for anybody that has not tweeted out the space, please do so now. And uh, mention Kabuki and Jason Matias, uh, which will be also be on the show today. Anyone that doesn't retweet out the space will not be getting their staking rewards from Cardano, this epoch. Thank you. Can yes. We, can we Thank make you. that a thing? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Also, I think Rancorp is rugged. Damn. I was really going to, I was hoping we were going to talk about the jacuzzi. I so we're going to have it news, every room. Um, so. breaking, breaking news before we get to our first guest. Um, rare Evo date have changed, right? Last year, Rare Evo in Colorado was in October. Well, next year it's going to be in August, so you better bring your swimsuits because it's going to be hot. And that swimming pool is pretty amazing, so don't miss it. How about your swimsuit body? I'm not sure if I could pull that off anymore. It's, it's tough now. Well, you're an old man, so no one cares. It's kind of like me. <laughs> I care. What are you talking about? I care. There's an ego involved in there somewhere. I'm not sure. Lido, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. So they're going to start jackhammering in my basement, so it's even going to be louder. Um, so I don't know if you kind of want to lead. I know you got to take off at 930, but there's other people here. I'll just shut my pie hole for a while. Oh, snack. Well, our guest is here. I don't think we should risk being late. And Absolutely we can start. <laughs> we can start a minute early for once in our life. That's the professional thing to do, right? Um, why don't it we is. go ahead? And give, go ahead and give a round of emojis. Your favorite emojis. Throw it up for Kabuki Tokyo. Welcome, welcome. It's Thank been you. a while. <laughs> yeah. Your good evening. Um. Good morning. Um. Yeah, anyway, um, hello everyone. I'm Yunir, the founder of Kabuti Tokyo. Yeah, um, it's very um, appreciated for me uh, to join here. Thanks for coming. Why don't you, why don't you just, for people who weren't here the last time you were here, why don't you just give us a, uh, a, the short version of how you came to Cardano and what did you do before Cardano? Okay, so, um, yeah, when I came to Cardano, I think the last um, September or something, and um, I started uh, investing in crypto uh, last uh, April, I think. And then um, the market condition um, gets uh, worse, and searching um, the next crypto that I, uh, I would invest but uh, when I know the uh, child's vision, I turned the completely uh, injured of the Cardano. And um, from that, I had been working for spreading um, Cardano to Japan and also spreading she NFT to Japan. So 
I had a event called um, CNFT Festival Japan Means West, um, which is the showcasing virtual event uh, that um, that invite a lot of uh, OG projects of CNFTs, um, such as Papadokun and the Cash and the a JPEG Stop Break and um, Derpers, um and the Ada Ninjas or something. And also, um, the moderator uh, was Kaizen Crypto and, uh, sorry, <laughs> Big Pay. So um, I'm fortunately had to um, hold this event and translate it, uh, it all contents into Japanese and um, showcasing what is the show CNFT and what is um, going on and something. And then I came to the uh, to back to the founder of the Kabuki Torture and um, I'm here, right? Neat, cool. Well, while you were here before and I are back, what did you what did you want to share with us? Yep. So uh, now um, our uh, Kabuki Tokyo mining is near from near, and uh, we are the first Japanese uh, CNF, CNFT project. So um, I want to prove that the um, CNFT community um, and the CNFT can um, spread uh, in Japanese. So um, spread in Japan. So um, I decided and I wonder how to um, invite more Japanese people to the CNFT space. Um, and I have a, um, I decided to our own Kabuki Tokyo collection. So if we um, make the um, CNFT collections, um, Japanese people tend to buy only the... Um, Japanese, uh, sorry, Japanese project because uh, we have the language barrier. But um, we we really want to uh, become the something like the a window that uh, showcase the CNFT is very good and the CNFT community is very warm and um and very beautiful. So. I really want to connect the Japanese culture and the Japanese people and uh, to the uh, CNFT community. Yeah. So today I want to uh, introduce uh, our project a little bit. Sounds great. Um, go ahead and get into it and then we'll get into some Q&A. Okay. So first, uh, we are in an anime project set in Tokyo Roppongi in the year 2040, centered around the story of five main characters known as Kabuchimono, who are hackers and uh, fight against the evil of the world. And uh, we using the um, governance feature, in the Genesis card that we saw in October, and uh, with input from the um, global Shinif community and a union uh, who originally produced the TV programs such as the um, Pokemon and the other um, child uh, program. And Shimae Naga, who had been working for Konami Digital Entertainment and a successful Ethereum space artist in charge of our main art. And an editor who worked for a Japanese publishing company while the creation process will continue. All main teams are Japanese. But um, here, uh, our community manager already is. So, <clears throat> um, could you uh, want to add our project, Lily? Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, I'm uh, the community manager for the Western. Uh... Oh, so maybe she can do it. Uh, she's not online now. That would probably be the best bet, I, I think. Okay. And um, I think the room is filled up enough and i believe you were speaking on if you want or unless you want to wait you want to wait later if you uh we'll wait right until Julia comes up so we can continue then sure that sounds great do you remember where you left off 
Uh, yeah, I just stopped talking. <laughs> yes. It's tough sometimes when that happens. You're like, yeah. when, when did it stop? You know, you don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I was thinking, why this, what, what happened? Why, why everyone disappeared? Maybe it was my fault. I don't know. I broke the space. <laughs> yeah, hero, hero has gas issues. And, uh, I see. and so he's taking care of that. <laughs> Uh, I love the hey, play. congratulations. Kabuki. You're back. Here we go. We got Lady Eat and uh, Kabuki is connecting. We'll see what happens here. Oh, wait. It says she connected already. Kabuki, are you there? Oh, man. No, she's connecting, bro. I'm seeing that now. So um, hopefully she comes up. So, Lady Eat, uh, would you like to carry on where from where you left up, having to do Absolutely. with the project? We'd love to hear it. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Vanessa. I'm uh, the Western Community Manager for the Kabuki Tokyo. Uh, I'm mostly, um, my uh, responsibilities are managing Discord, Twitter, promotions, games, and just driving the community further for the English part. Uh, so we're trying to bring a lot of members from the uh, Western community into into the into our Discord and try like Uni had said we're trying to bridge our two communities between us. So kind of building the trust we have uh, main, uh, two different chats and we're trying to organize the games and the you know, community events uh, uh, in our Discord between both Japanese community and the Western community. Great. And how's that been going so far? And, and what is your, what is your, been some of your most uh, successful strategies surrounding that? Well, we're, we're going like mostly promotion for Twitter and Discord and for other communities. People are very interested in the project. So we are most successful thing is the, the games. I'm trying to run some games and activities in the Discord, so people try to get engaged into uh, with us. Uh, we're also building a character lore and story, which uh, people are trying to, which people trying to follow, and that's the base of the Kabuki. So our story is the baseline for the future of the project as well. Uh, because we're not just building a, a PFP project, we're trying to build the story surrounding all those five characters that we have in the in the uh, uh, in the West here in the in the, 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 the West, yeah. Hey, Lady Eve. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um. um I just got a. Uh, chat from Yunya. Hi, hi guys. I'm the mod for uh, Kabuki Tokyo. I'm the Japanese and English mod for uh, Kabuki Tokyo. My name is Henry. I just got a um, just a chat from Yunya. Um, she's trying to reboot her iPhone and uh, trying to re-enter the space. I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that. So um, just until um, she does get on, um, she just wanted maybe just carry on a little bit um, between Lady Eve and myself what we can fill in about, you know, what's going on, what's, you know, what's the latest update. We have our PFP collection going on um, in December. So maybe we can maybe add to that. Lady, what do you think? Uh, yeah, that's, that sounds great. So you can, you can ask us about the project. Uh, we're currently planning to mint on the into weeks. Uh, so we, we released our Genesis collection of 440 NFTs. Uh, which are sold out, uh, and the current floor price in them are about up there above 600 ADA. And we're going to have our mint here 12th of December. Uh, so that's what we're aiming for now. Looks like we have a question. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, the question I had early on, I, I just never asked it um, in the Discord. Uh, does Discord have like a translator bot that you could? utilize for um, different uh, language speakers that would make it like kind of one cohesive channel? Uh, no, unfortunately, we're having two, two separate channels, one one English channel, one Japanese channel, and we have very small 
a Vietnamese community that joined us, but people are free to communicate between each other with the Deepal app. I think there is there is one good integration, but I haven't tried it yet to integrate into community. Yeah, it's funny that Don, you um, brought that up. We were just I was just talking to Lady about that today, and um, you know we haven't tried the uh, the uh, Discord bot for the translation. And I we, we know that that it's out there, but uh, we just don't know how effective it will be. Maybe we'll try it out, but um, yeah, that's that's something that we might uh, consider in, uh, going forward. Yeah, because I, I mean, on the Japanese side, um, I, I know they have a very vibrant community. It'd be nice to interact with them on a you know, an easier way. I understand with the Vietnamese community. Yeah, but definitely we would, we will look. I'm looking into that bot, by the way. So we will probably implement it if it's that good. So I know there's a back. mention here. Um, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna just check. Oh, oh yep. Mm -hmm. Looks like you're back with us. Yeah. Back. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You made it. Mm -hmm. Um, I using iPhone, so maybe um, Elon Musk strong um. <laughs> avoid me, right? <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm back. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we were just um, just briefly touching on the uh, upcoming PFP collection. Lady mm -hmm. it was just telling about when the minting is happening in on 12th December. What uh, you know, the 4,400 collection. Mm -hmm. I think we just stopped there. We had a question from Don about um, whether we'll have a translation uh, okay. bot somewhere. But I think mm -hmm. that's where we, we, we are right now. Yeah. So, yep. Yep. Thank you. I can catch up. So, um, what, what, <laughs> from, uh, from where? Should, I should we, um, should we maybe touch on the, um, maybe the utility of the PFP or, yeah, just in general? Mm -hmm. do, do you think that's a good idea, um, Hero or, um, that's before, 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 okay. Is that what you're gonna ask, Black Junk? Uh, I was gonna get into it a little bit, having to do with uh, just the the uh, Twitter page, how many followers they have in this short amount of time that they've been on Twitter, uh, which is crazy to look at, and um, also the you know, uh, cross crossing over into the U.S. audience and how that's working out. Okay, so um, we have um, almost four four thousand uh, six hundred followers on Twitter, and also uh, we have uh, right now maybe uh, two thousand seven hundred people followers in uh, on Discord, right? And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so and if you're interested in our project, you can um, enter our um, Kabuki uh, Harbor, and so you can gather uh, all the information in English. And um, we aim to, um, through this project, uh, we next for our PFP, we um, aim to bring more um, Ethereum artists to the uh, to share NFT space. So uh, we will start uh, some kind of the launchpad system. So if someone migrate to the Ethereum to Cardano, uh, we can um, sell a little amount of their um, their art and um, airdrop or on um, discount for their a low list or something. Yeah, Yunya, wasn't mm -hmm. it like around June, uh, you know, when we opened the launch, the Twitter, um, was that around June, I think? What uh, it was? Yeah, so August, it was. Somewhere, yeah. I think it uh, opened the late August, we opened the, the mm -hmm. Twitter. Right, just, right. Yeah. I can't believe it's already, it's it's only been three months, but yeah, that's that's the right. And so I think the other question was like how we're kind of outreaching towards the U.S. audience and maybe broader Western world. Um, okay. But I, I think yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, first, um, we're part of the uh, Ada Ninjas launch part, so uh, they help us to reach out the Western community, 
And also, I、uh, mentioned before,、um, I had a、uh, Uh, I hold the event that、uh, called the CNFT Festival,、uh, Japan Mr. West. So I have the a connection with them. So, and the JPEG,、uh, we also the part of the JPEG store launch pad. So, so、um, first,、uh, we started to、um, in that way. Yeah. So, Maybe I can add on that as a mod、mm -hmm. there、um, and like how much reception we're getting from the Western community. So, we have a lot of fans from you know the Ape Society, from Ada Ninjas, from some of the、uh, younger projects like The Apprentice,、um, Ore Ore Ore. Like, we, we have all these kind of fans that have kind of come to Kabuki、um, and just hang around and、um, joined us、uh, from pre Genesis days, and so. We, we, we have a pretty vibrant、um, Western、uh, English speaking community as well as a Japanese、um, community.、Um, so, you know, I'm very happy that, that, that that's where we are right now, maybe two weeks just prior to the PFP event. So, that, that's, that's for me. Yeah. Did you have a question, Pyro? Yeah.、Um, so, what is, I'm, I'm just curious uh, uh, the, the reception that Cardano is having in the, in, In Japan.、Um, and you said you're having a, a you have a launch pad type of uh, uh, curation system that you guys want to do.、Um, is this、uh, something that will bring like Japanese artists to the West? Because there's a big hunger for obvious、uh, for for、uh, Japanese style、um, art,、uh, especially like anime here <laughs>、um, in the West. And and Is, is this something that's more like you guys are kind of curating on the, on the ground floor and like, like a real fight space? Or is this online? I'm just kind of curious where、uh, the vision stands here. So,、um, Henley, could you explain a little bit、um, that I can understand?、Um... Oh. そうですね。あの、あのまずはど。どうやって探してくるのっていうふうに言ってるそれがそうです、ね、リアルライフなのかどうなのか。うん。そうそう。あの、パイロ、you were、um, mentioning about、um, how we're bringing the、uh, Japanese anime talent、uh, towards Cardano NFTs or Cardano、um, ecosystem, right? Yes.、Uh, yeah, the Japanese anime talent.、Um... In, in Cardano and what the reception is.、Uh, as oh, yeah, of Cardano. Yeah, sure, sure. So, I think that the Cardano crypto community is a very important thing to do with the Cardano blockchain. So, the Cardano blockchain is a very important thing to do with the Cardano blockchain. So, the Cardano blockchain is a very important thing to do with the Cardano b l o c k c h a i Okay, so first,、um, Japanese、uh, Cardano image.、Um, so, there are a lot of wells、uh, of Ada in Japan because the ICO happened in Japan. So, but、uh, they are not familiar with、uh, CNFTs. So,、um, gradually, we,、um, I think,、um, they're interested. In CNFT space, too. And the other、uh, NFT fans are not so familiar with CNFT. So maybe the,、um, for them, this is the first contact to the Cardano NFT through our project, I think. But the、um, people in the Ethereum space are very interested in.、Uh, Developing their project, multi chain project, right? So, yeah, now I have,、uh, I, I'm now、um, asked、uh, from, by many people、uh, what is Caldano and the atmosphere about the CNFT community and so on. So,、um, the glossary、um, getting more、um, interest about Caldano. So, and、uh, how, can, how can we、uh, onboard the 
uh, individual artists or the projects from Ethereum side or the outside of the uh, NFT space. Uh, we have a partnership with the Soda NFT. Soda NFT is the one of the um, most biggest artist community, and they have more than um, 25k followers. So, and their concept is supporting uh, the creators uh, for coming to NFT space. So we have partnership with them, so we can search uh, easily. Um, the artists who want to come to uh, Cardano, right? Yeah, you know, why don't you also touch on the uh, onboarding of the already co-artists of Kabuki Tokyo as well? Maybe um, the two co-artists. Yeah. Do, do you want? Do you want me to? Okay. So first, our main artist Maya Nagar. She is the um, one of the most famous artists. Japanese artist, um, and she has fifty uh, followers or something. And um, when I found her, I DM'd her, and uh, um, she hadn't haven't uh, launched a generative collection yet. So um, I proposed her to uh, make her own uh, generative collection, and. Um, so there are many uh, Japanese Japanese artists who are interested in uh, having projects, but they're the longest barrier and also have the um, technical barrier, right? So it was hard for them, but they are really willing to uh, to uh, stand. Sorry, um, willing to be known by the uh, whole. Uh, internationally, right? So, um, yeah, uh, they're open mind to coming to this NFT space. And also, Kaine, our manga artist, is the. Um, I found her our uh, she NFT community, and she um really interested in uh, making manga in English. So. I reach out to her and uh, say hello, and um, Cardano community is very warm, and uh, there are a lot of anime fans, so she gradually interested in the Shinifty space, and uh, now uh, she is our uh, one of the our sorry manga artists. Right, so um, this is the way how we want uh, we invite our. Um, artists great just a few more questions and then we'll wrap up and sorry jason uh because of the rug we will go a little over um but don't worry you're getting a full time we'll, we'll go a little over at the end of the show too um hopefully that doesn't mess with your schedule too much um so you did the first drop the genesis drop what was the main price for that yeah, um, first in the stop, um, uh, the mint price was 78 or Okay, and, so, and yeah. then 78 and you sold out. Congratulations. Thank What's you. the utility for that Genesis drop? Yes, yeah, so the Genesis collection, now uh, we heard the utility for the... Uh, um, which, uh, for the I, Genesis I can take that. Yeah, thank you, you. thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so our Genesis drop has the, uh, first of all, there the Genesis token is also a governance token. So you as a holder will decide how the project will go. So we have uh, votes uh, on how the manga will go, how, how the bar will go, uh, how the artist will, will go as well. So which, uh, so for example, this artist, um, Kaina Kizuki, she was decided by the community. Uh, so we had a vote, uh, and this is the direction we took. The second one is the uh, access to the Kabuki bar. Uh, Kabuki Tokyo has a, has their own bar in Tokyo, which is uh, also owned by Yulia, and you and which is open once per week, and you as a holder have uh, access to the bar, and also you get a free drink. 
uh, as well as the future manga drops, uh, novel NFT drops, uh, which will be included in the future for the both Genesis and the PFP holders. And for this PFP drop, you, you get as well a discount of 20 ADA uh, per NFT you can mint, which is the maximum of five as a Genesis holder. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And then the same question for the PFP drop. Um, so why, why would people get the PFP drop? Uh, PFP gets this, about the same utility in the form of that you have an access to the bar. Uh, because you're also a Kabuki Tokyo member, but you don't get a free drink. <laughs> uh, you get discounts on the physical goods at our community shop that is going to be released in the future. And um, as I mentioned, the airdrop for the manga stories, future NFTs. Uh, you get white lists and discounts for the future uh, for the Japanese art artist uh, that you mentioned, which who come from Ethereum to Padano. And uh, we're also planning to do in school Discord illustration, how to draw anime, how if some people are interested that uh, they can learn to speak Japanese as well. Uh, yes. But yeah, so that will be like online classes that we're going to hold and uh, does a plant as a utility. Super fun. And then in no more than two sentences, what is Kabuki Tokyo? Yep. So the Kabuki torture concept is the um, combined professional aspects and the community opinion and make a really good uh, anime IPs. So um, okay. the future our um, aiming is to create an animation uh, with the um, famous animation stage in Japan. But the, this takes a lot of time and uh, this is a long term um, that makes sense yeah. let me mm -hmm. see if I can let me see if I can say it back if I understand so Kabuki Tokyo is uh, there's a word you said that I didn't catch uh, but you're basically bringing in com community maybe you can fill in that in to, to, to develop an, a unique animation anime IP Yep. Um, and also, uh, we, we want to become uh, the window for the Japanese uh, Japanese culture, mm -hmm. and also uh, become a window for the uh, CNFT global community. Right. <laughs> right. Super cool. And then, how did you decide on five percent for your royalty for the Genesis drop? And then, what's the royalty? Maybe just say the details for the coming drop, the PFP drop too. What's the main price? What's the royalty and all that? Yep. I think uh, the Genesis is a 5% because uh, we're using the main visual art to create a, our a Genesis collection. But um, our main PFP collection, um, not our Genesis holder, um, 19, 99 either um, for each mint. And the uh, uh, loyalty uh, we will at least and uh, eight percent. Okay, sounds good. Um, and then so for the PFP drop, what's the? Did you say the main price? What What's the main price? Ninety nine ADA. Ninety nine ADA. Okay. Yeah. I, I missed that. Um, yeah, and the holders will get a discount twenty dollars so for the Genesis holders, so to be seventy nine ADA. If you're a Genesis holder, um, if you just want the utility, you wouldn't necessarily. Why would a Genesis holder buy the PFP? Maybe let's put it that way. Mm, it's an extension to the collection. It gives uh, extra. Mm, it gives extra utility as a PFP holder. So you're getting well, all the bonuses of the uh, of the uh, onboarding of the whitelist for the future projects and discounts 
uh, there's much more included than the uh, genesis. So uh, maybe I'll just add a little bit to that. Um, so the Genesis collection is like, you know, it's it's the hardcore anime fan NFT, you know, which kind of drives the governance and everything. But the PFP is the main collection of Kabuki Tokyo, right? So this is where all the art comes in for the generative art. Um, the the, the 4000 collection is going to be quite, quite a, um, a piece of work. Um, from these anime creators, that's where um, you know it's all expressed. So the Genesis holders would be very interested in finding out what the Kabuki Tokyo art is going to be, and that's going to be reflected in the PFB, and that's you know that that's going to be the main thing um, that they're looking forward that makes to. Makes sense. Plus, yeah, plus the utility, of course. But yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, did you? Who's your? Do you have a lawyer, a retainer, um, or did you guys consult one or? What's the lawyer story there with all the IT stuff and and other things? Yes, yeah, so um, for future we're gonna um, we're gonna distribute uh, IP sorry lawyer day for our holders, but at that at this at this point, um, Japanese law. Um, it is, it's not allowed to um, distribute the loyalty for the uh, holders. So, um, alternative, uh, we will distribute the, our community point or something, right? So, if um, our holder can use use the um, point, um, our holder can um, can get our uh, physical goods or something. Um, discounted price, and also um, you can have drink um, at Kabuki Bar a uh, discounted price. That makes sense. So, so do you have a lawyer on your team? Yep. So we will um, basically we will use it for um, build our project more because this is the bear market. So. Uh, the funding for uh, the uh, our main correction is not so big, right? Ah, right. Uh, sorry. Um, now, sorry, I I misunderstood it. Um, so um, we're um having a cons consultant with a liar, right? That the um, inside our team, uh, we have a lawyer now. Great. And then your developer, he's he's in house, right? He's part of the team. I, he or she? I think I saw that on the website, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we have the developer Hayachi. Um, he is very familiar with uh, generating things. But uh, he's not so familiar with the uh, minting on Cardano, so uh, we um, use the minting ser services. Okay. Go great. Um, Blackjack, do you have a hard question before we wrap up? <laughs> I had a hard rug a minute ago. <laughs> I know, right? Just trying to join everybody else in the group. That way we don't... I love that. Like both you and Epoch was gone. Oh, golly. Uh, I, you know what? Did you ask the question surrounding the 50 year plan for the actual NFTs? I didn't ask, but that's a good question. You can ask. Okay, so I'm curious about the long term uh, of the NFT and being able to uh, hold it, uh, be able to view it, things of that nature, and what you're doing in order to ensure long term that your NFTs will be around. Um, for us and for future generations. Yeah, how are you protecting your NFT, the NFTs, the pictures, the PFP from an IPFS rug? So uh, I want to ask uh, Handy. Handy, I mean, so you guys are kind of interested in, you know, the the long term, right? Because we we obviously we are using IPFS 
as the technology to um, yep. reflect the pictures, your, 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 your vision is like how we will be preserving and protecting that for future generations, like 50 years down the road, right? Isn't, that's the question. Correct. Right. So um, first, um, so, uh, I'm not... これね、もっとね、多分これ長期的な話で、そもそも我々のプロジェクトって単体じゃなくてそのほら、あの政府とかいろんな人を巻き込んでやろうとしてるじゃないですか。うんうんうん。そう、ちょっとだけ説明しまし
for the humor of it. But apparently, sh- sharpening pencil is 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 a thing. Um, so just quickly, the world to do with a knife. So, um, so much Black time. Frost five for bankruptcy. That meant if you had your crypto on black on Black Five, Black, black five. Frost, Black Five, Black Five, not Black Frost. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Black Frost bigger it's, than Black Okay, Frost. we're moving on again. Okay? We need to get to the guest. It's snowing. That's why I it's said adjacent. Frost. Black it's Five. They're five for Ben Ruffy. Um, <laughs> so if you have your crypto on there, that means you probably might not see that crypto again. When you hold your crypto on most centralized exchanges, they actually treat it as you loaning your crypto to them. Um, so if you actually, if that's not what you're intending to do, you want to keep your crypto in your own wallet. And if you do that on Cardano, you can stake it to a pool and earn about four, four-ish percent, four, four point five percent annually. Or you can also participate in some DeFi stuff. You can do that while your crypto is on an exchange. So get your crypto off those exchanges unless you intend to sell them. Do it now. Um, Jason, we all know who you are, but maybe there are people here who don't know who you are. Who are you, my good sir? Welcome to the stage. Uh, so my name's Jason. I've been a career artist for the last 10 years, um, full-time since 2012. And uh, I've been selling the big physical stuff for, for years, and then crypto happened, and I came. And, uh, and then NFTs happened, and uh, it took me a little bit, but I followed suit. So um, I've been doing NFTs on crypto, art NFTs, excuse me, not PFPs, um, on crypto since last June, on Cardano since last June. And uh, and then to today, yesterday, I released a, a kind of a big art project that I had been working on for the last two, three months called Trees of Peace. Great NFT artist, um, full time artist since 2012, Cardano since last June. Welcome, welcome. Why don't you get into it? You know, get into some questions after that. Yeah, so uh, everyone knows about AI now, and it kind of hit for artists pretty hard that this new technology sort of circumvented the creative side of being an artist or the process side of being an artist because everyone can have a good idea but execution is really what separates you know like the winning entrepreneurs from the people with good ideas like i remember just now my my father claims to have invented tea bags before like mass produced tea bags before they ever came out and he's a marine biologist he had some company he invented a ton of shit but he claims to have invented this too before they came out and then like they came out and and were distributed to grocery stores and he's like i could have been rich and like there's a big difference between having an idea and then executing on it and ai seems to circumvent the execution part or the skill required to do the execution and at first i was like fuck ai right especially when it started producing what would seem like visual arts to to most people um and be outside of the sort of like the gan stuff and, and whatever um but then i realized you know i had the same feeling about about nfts too when uh because i've been selling traditional art for for years before this happened and and then i had to go back in time and remember sort of this mantra one of my tech sergeants used to say he was just to be like uh, I, I guess it it has more weight when you say it the way he did. He's like this Creole guy. And he would say, uh, don't fight it, grow with it. Every time we had a problem come down from the flight line. So um, I uh, uh, so I decided to take on AI, but I decided to do it in a way that sort of proves that AI is not the one doing the art. And this collection, Trees of Peace, very closely mirrors my own photography. Uh, and the the core aesthetic that I'm looking for. I I pinned up a a thread that explains a a bit more in depth, but also succinctly, how I made this collection and what all of the elements mean. But the the idea is that if I can maintain my aesthetic of in my photography through using this other creative medium that takes a lot of the creative process out of my own hands, um, then 
I'm still the guy wielding the sword. Like I'm still the 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 pen behind the the war machine or whatever you want to call it. Um, so so I I started with what do I like to create this this idea of comfortable isolation and I brought it to how do I do this in AI. So I started with this idea of trees and trees of peace. And I used my own trees to seed the first ones. And then I created this collection. And at the end of this collection, I intend to do a photograph that looks like these AI pieces so that the whole thing is sort of homogenous and the whole thing is is inclusive to the creativity and it's none of it can be said to have been done by some other intellectual thing. So Jason, I had uh, a question surrounding, I'm looking at the images that you put out in the tweet and uh, a couple of them really resonate with me. One is the snow falling uh, surrounding the tree. And then the other is, is it seems like a sunrise. Um, was that a, when you're creating these things, I've talked to somebody else that does AI, else comes to mind, along with our artist, Chris Ellis, um, for freeloaders. And he says that it, you kind of direct the AI as to what result you're trying to get from it by giving it certain instructions. Um, were you doing this yourself or was somebody else doing it? And, and just talk about a, a bit of the creative process around that. So I'm doing it myself. And then in addition to each AI developed piece, I put on average 45 minutes into editing and perfecting what the AI put out. Um, so, AI in general works in like four stages. You describe what you want. You describe what you want should look like. You describe what the whole scene should look like. And then you give the development parameters. So if I'm like looking briefly at my mid journey prompts, like what I was going for was a, a magical wind blown Sakura tree growing from a mossy boulder folding, floating above or in a foggy lake full of fallen leaves. And that's like the basic, right? And then from there, I have to describe the attributes of the tree. So it's created in a in a style from the 1800s that I call the, well, not that I call, but it's called the Hudson Valley School of Arts, which is actually the inspiration for most of my photography in terms of stylistically. Um, the atmosphere should be glowing with volumetric light. Uh, the color should be in CMYK. Um, there should be a hint of Monet in the way the colors are are, are added, like the, the strokes that, quote unquote, that the AI does. Um, but I also want them to be a little bit matte and blah, blah, blah. And then the scene should be like a fantasy scene um, that is intricately detailed. It should be rendered using the Octane engine or something similar to the Octane rendering tool and uh, should resemble a photograph that's done in AK. So like when you you put all that together and you, you sort of start refining it you use seeds. And then sometimes I used the pieces that I created as seeds for new pieces and just sort of recycling the same um, soil for it to grow in. And, and then it gives you this image. And then I take that image because it's not perfect. There's a lot of like artifacts. There's a lot of highlighting on the edges um, that sort of resembles photographic artifacts, but uh, I pull them apart. Like I would cut the tree out of each image. I would repaint the background so that it's fully, uh, what about, I want to say like, so there's no differences in tone as, as there should be, you know, if there was like a sun coming up behind it or, or higher light coming from behind the image, which if you look up the Hudson Valley School of Art, that's, that's basically how they painted everything. Um, and, and then I sort of refine it using traditional Photoshop techniques. So the other follow-up I would have then is, is that as the AI was starting to generate these images that you, you've put all the parameters into, did you find it actually creating something more than what you were expecting or something that you actually loved that was almost like a mistake, it seemed like, or something that came from it unexpectedly I would, is what I'm trying to relate there. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, there was like happy accidents, as you could call them, and that I would see and, and then incorporate and sort of run with, like the levitating trees, for instance. Um, when I was ex trying to explain to the AI how to make a boulder covered in moss, um, 
one of the boulders had like a very narrow, it was like a pile of boulders and there was a narrow, excuse me, a narrow section in between them. And I was like, well, shoots, that's cool. What if I just removed that narrow section and made the piece highlight or hover? And that's what I did. So none of the, none of the levitating pieces were created by the AI. They were created with this funny shaped boulder that I kept reinforcing in the AI. And then I would edit the, the middle out um, so that it looked like it was levitating. Um, so that's sort of a, a chain of events that happened from in, an unexpected prompt. But I also got scores and scores, if not hundreds of unexpected, unwanted things in these in these creations. And I think a big part of doing this AI process and keeping it aligned with your aesthetic and the story that you were you were developing through your art is cutting out a lot of that. So there were, I mean, there are thousands of trees that I made, right? Images. And then I whittled that to finally editing 48 pieces. And then I took those 48 pieces and I gave them to all my whitelist holders and said, cut out the ones you guys don't like. And I ended up with like 36. So um, the, the process just kept whittling it down until it was the best trees that were left. Absolutely love it. Um, it I, I want to sit in a 3D immersive environment and just have the snow surrounding me as I'm looking at the tree. It, it's just extraordinary. So thank you very much. Uh, I want to build it. Anybody else? Yeah. Have, that sounds really good to me, man. I'm, I'm totally down with that. Uh, what a great meditative experience it would be to go into some sort of immersive experience like that. So uh, you set that stage perfectly. Pyro, do you have a question? Yeah. Hey, Jason. I um, hope you're doing good. My question is, uh, you said you wanted to um, take take the AI footage and recreate, or AI footage, AI uh, art, and recreate it um, in real in real life. Are the, would you do that in miniatures, or how would you do that um, that process? Or would you find so, like? Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go on. So what I did to do the pieces was I went to a rock store for lack of a better term. What are those stores called? Ali? A rock and gem store. And, um, asked the guy if I could take pictures of his rocks. Right. So we took him outside and I, he, she held them up and turned them in all different directions. And I basically got the, the core of what I was going to build one of the trees out of. And then on the way to rare bloom, I saw was close to be the perfect tree to photograph. So I photographed this, this yellow blooming tree or, you know, autumn colors turning tree that was standing alone by itself. It was near the road enough that I could walk to it and there was a blue sky behind it. So I was able to photograph it and then I could take it out of the image, change the colors of the leaves from yellow to basically anything I want, um, manipulate the tree if I want, and then use that in the final photograph. So what I'm going to be building is a composite out of the work that I have created and work that I had shot since the idea came. Um, and the, the finished product is going to be very much like one of those, one of the three levitating trees in the collection. Yeah, that's cool. That's art. That's, I, I, I like how you're taking AI and you're, uh, you're growing with it, with the, the, um, that quote. That's cool. Thanks. So we're here with Jason Matias, and he's going over his new project, uh, which he's incorporating AI into uh, what he's already been doing, obviously an established artist. And uh, So if you have any questions for Jason, please, by all means, request speaker. Um, Jason, so going forward here, um, it, as far as this project, does this seem like this is the beginning of a new chapter in what you're doing within your art and, you know, what you do for a living? Yeah, I mean, you have to grow with it. And, and I think, so if you go through the thread that I posted above, there is um, the pictures of me with the art that I've been selling for years. And that was, you know, I was just creating it within my idea, creating these things that I, I'm proud of. But I was also like ignoring some of the other things I really wanted to do. Um, but NFTs have allowed me to create things that I could sell. But, you know, like I'm, I'm an artist, I'm a small business with a product to sell, right? So in the past, all I could do was sell wall art. 
and people didn't like pictures of angels in the you know these places that I created to to put on their walls. So I never made them. But now that there's NFTs, I can create it and and then still have a place for it. So I can still put food on the table doing what I want to do. So I think that going forward, there's going to be a lot of mixture of this fantasy and this um, photographic style that I've, that I've carried thus far. And then going forward, we'll continue to expand. For example, uh, the Guardian collection that I did with Ali has, is all photography from scenes from around the world that we've put her into from a studio shoot. But while I was just starting out in AI, I created a scene that I could put her into using AI, created the background using AI to then put her in. So there's going to be some mixture. And AI has already been a part of digital editing for a long time. Um, not quite as extensive as it is now, but anytime you did a content aware delete uh, or section replacement in Photoshop, the Photoshop was using some sort of machine learning or AI to replace those pixels with similar pixels around it. And this is just more going in that direction. I think that in the future, more, I mean, all of my work is already very story heavy. If you go back and like look at the stories or, or read them or, or the videos I've made about them, they're all very story driven. And I think that the story is gonna be even more important going forward because anyone can anyone can take an idea and make it with AI. Um, like I'm looking at a pillow right now that's kind of red and Middle Eastern style and like, oh, I'm gonna make uh I guess like imagine slash um who's that character you like? The big white guy who heals shit? Disney character, Ali? Yeah, so Baymax but he Baymax but created by a Middle Eastern scientist with these kind of symbols on the pillow. And then boom, it's done. Right? Or some versions of it are done and you can go through and select and process. And that's just creativity applied, but it's not there's no idea behind it. There's no real context that well, that is meant for people to connect to. So I think the context is gonna be even even more important in separating um what people can make with ease and what really is becomes a part of, of people's lives and the way people can react and reflect upon the art that they love. Yeah, I, I noticed, so I was at Rare Bloom and I had my real first experience with interactive art. Uh, there was a display where there was just uh, uh, screens displaying different NFTs. And the ones that I found myself drawn to were those that had some sort of movement to them or it was almost like you know uh like a short film that i was watching in essence and uh the ones that seemed to kind of draw you in and bring you into the experience were the ones i i loved the most and is this something that maybe you might be might consider doing as a an exhibit um yeah yes and no like so those types of art that you were looking at, like I don't have the, the skill set to do them. Um, Ren had a really cool piece. And, and then when he explained the story or the reason behind the gem eating the hearts that move around the artwork, um, the story, the, the work actually meant something. So, but I don't have the, the skill set to make those. Uh, there are three animated pieces, one of which I'm giving away in this collection. Um, but if, if I was going to do something more than a digital art display, then yeah, I would, what I would create is some, is an art, is one of these pieces that fit into a room. So like when you stand in one place in the room, the art is projected all over so that this landscape that you see, this sort of lake that is covered in fog and floating leaves extends to your right and left. And then, in front of you, you can walk up to the tree and, and whatnot. That would be a real art installation, in my opinion. And I would love to do something like that with um, proper funding and time. But uh, but as far as like digital displays, like these will all look great on, on a digital display. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, so Michael or Rand, you guys came up uh, and joined the speaker. Did you have anything for Jason? Oh, yeah, 
that for myself. I just I just joined in, so I'm not sure what what's all about. But I I, I will be listening in and see where I can add value. So uh, definitely thank you for uh, you know noticing me. Okay. Yeah. Great. Ran. What's going on, guys? Can you hear me? What's happening, dude? Surviving, surviving, working, working. We just got our dates set up. Rare Evolution will be August 24th through 26th. It is confirmed at the Gaylord Rockies again. Awesome. Well, it sounds to me like as you're coming up and I'm listening to Jason, uh, I would love to see some sort of like collab there where uh, Jason is providing some sort of art rolling in through Rare potentially. Absolutely. Um, as you know, like an intro or something like that. That'd be really awesome. I know you're heavily, uh, you, you love supporting artists and stuff like that yourself. So, Ooh, had a really good time uh, meeting with Jason and Allie when we were in Switzerland. We all got to meet up day one and go hang out at a castle and uh, see the sights while we were all together, take a couple hours of a car ride. So, it was really awesome meeting Jason and definitely really support his art and what he's doing. Um, it's amazing stuff. I got to learn a lot. Um, he probably taught Wes and I probably how to shoot some better photography. He's probably looking down upon our our rough social media posts, but it was a really good time. Very nice. That whole statement you just made surrounding in a car, driving around Switzerland and going to a castle uh, just made me just a touch jelly. Uh, but uh, maybe at the next summit, I'll be able to make that one. So um, sounds amazing, though. So um, if I could close out, the, um, the drop is live on JPEG Store. It was, it was on the front of JPEG Store for like six or seven hours, which was pretty cool. Um, and the, the pieces are 1,000 ADA each, with the animated pieces are about 3,700 ADA. And there's 36, I think, uh, total. Well, there's 40 total. I think there's 36 left at the moment. And the the story links are all in that tweet that I just posted up above. Great. Thanks, man. I just got a little bit of a phone call there, so I missed a, a small portion of that. So, in essence, the, the call to action is surrounding uh, the project you have and, and the statement you just made, correct? <laughs> yeah, the, the call to action is to go buy my art. <laughs> um, uh, yes, please. Go buy Jason's yeah. art. I love the trees. So I'm in Miami right now, and I am supposed to be at Art Basel over at Scope Art Expo. Um, so like that's where I'm headed to right now. But uh, if anyone's in Miami, come to Scope. We'll see if we can get you in. But I don't think the tickets are too expensive. And I have some. I have a big seven foot piece showing, and um, and I, I probably should run, but. If, if anyone has any other questions, like please ask or shoot me a message or join my Discord, and uh, I was I'm here to share. Asking Jason, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Uh, just bad at talking sometimes. Did you um, talk over Jason Pyro? I did, um, but care. my question was for Jason uh, because I noticed you guys, you uh, you and Ali go to a lot of conferences. Um, I'm thinking or wondering why, uh, you know. Uh, crypto art seems to be kind of like a, a bubble and where they like I don't see a lot of people marketing going to like uh, uh, different art conferences or uh, and like um, anime cons or something of that sort but what, what's your perspective on going to these these live events and opening up past the the crypto barrier so I my career has mostly been made on going to art events um like uh, this is my fourth time showing during our Basel, and you know, crypto's only been around for two years. So, <clears throat> like, I come and show the art, and I meet collectors, and I meet people, and opportunities unfold from them for the next twelve months. Um, uh, an example perfectly is is a guy who saw me last year, and then I sent him a text saying that I'll be here this year, and he's like, "Oh, I want to be your, I want to be your main distributor for the Atlanta area." And so, like, these opportunities unfold. So you have to keep going to these conferences and meeting people. Um, and so that makes it's, it's no different for for the NFT crypto space. And Ali is a art recruiter for for JPEG Store, so she's going out and meeting all these artists at the, the IRL shows like this one, who haven't taken the leap into crypto or haven't taken 
more than a curious or suspicious look at, at what's happening with the NFT space. Um, so yeah, we have to keep going. I, I need to keep going if I'm going to keep putting food on the table and, and creating opportunities through through meeting other people who are dedicated or invested enough in the space to also show up at these events. And, you know, the one thing I, I think for anybody that's in the crypto space that obviously there's a lot of DGENs, the NFTs are key, you know, the rarities, all this different stuff, right? But ultimately, if you're thinking about how to hedge against inflation, how to secure wealth and potentially see an uptick in the value of that wealth, art is one of those that is very well known for doing that. And uh, for those who are producing something out of the ordinary, like uh, Jason does, uh, this is something that potentially could be a hedge against inflation going forward. You know, so uh, obviously um, that's all forward thinking statements and suggestion, not uh, not financial advice. But at the same time, it is proven that art is very good at doing that. So um, just in that realm, as far as the financial side of it goes. Uh, I, I agree. Totally. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we don't have to go to the NFA side, but as an artist, you know, I'm, I'm creating the art is the utility for, for the most part. The art is the utility. With this collection, there are different rarities. So I added traits to everything, whether it's a Sakura tree or a willow tree, or if it's a white willow or um, a white Sakura or levitating, whatever. So like I tried to add a little bit of that extra DJ and stuff to the art, but in general, the art is its own utility and, and it's a store of wealth. And it's a, when, when you can attach yourself to the idea, then it becomes more than just pixels on a page. Uh, so, you know, I, I hope that the people who, who buy this or who, who invest the, well, I hate saying invest, but the people who collect this art, um, find more in it than, uh, than just, uh, than, than just whatever utility that it supposedly can can give you. Would totally agree. I, I, I truly believe it's kind of a triple threat though, then so if you're doing that already and then obviously visually it's it's extraordinary. Uh, and at the same time it's an investment. So you're kind of hitting on all three points there. And uh, I really think to be a successful artist, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, I know I have a few friends that are are struggling artists. And um, yeah, uh, you've been very good at uh, marketing yourself along with your, your wife. She's amazing uh, at doing that as well. So, you know, you, you kind of like got a bit of a dynamic duo there. Lido, did you have anything to add? Because uh, I think we're here closing close towards the end of this. Well, let me uh, jump in, Blog Jock, before you okay. close the space, bro. Okay, okay, again. Is your name Lido? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Jump in. Well, I, I know you're closing it down. I know Lido gets talking and, you know, nobody gets a, a word. In and that's it. Right. You're absolutely right. You know? okay. <laughs> you're done. Yeah, yeah. I love you, Lido. Oh, I love you, bro. I do. I, I just, you know, I just wanted to jump up here and say, you know, Jay, good job, bro. Uh, you know, working with a new medium like this and integrating it into what you got going on in your toolkit. I, I think it's really cool that you're embracing it. And uh, you're playing around with it and trying to see what you can do with the medium. So I really enjoy what I see on JPEG store, man. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm contemplating your, your animated piece. Uh, so, you know, it's very attractive, man. I see the work you put into it, you know. So uh, I just wanted to commend you for branching out and adding this to your arsenal. And uh, look forward to seeing what you do in the future with all this, you know, and what doors open up. Thanks, man. I'll keep plugging along. Um, so there, there's two animated. One of them is having a problem with the mint, but it's it's there. Uh, one is the the one that transitions from twilight to sunset, and then the other has the uh, the floating falling blossoms. And they're all infinite loops. So you put them up on your wall or on your display in the metaverse, and you, there's never going to be a glitch or a takedown or or like a scene between the beginning and end. And you could just leave them leave them floating for hours. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful, man. I love the pedals, bro. Good job. Thanks, dude. Well, awesome, man. Thanks for coming on to the show. We really appreciate you being here. And uh, I I'm, I am, for one, a fan uh, and will always be going into the future. And, and um, I currently do not hold a piece of your art, but uh, I do intend on doing so. Um, but um, Lido, uh, did you want to, or did you have anything 
uh, for to close out this uh, segment. No, good. I had to step into a fiat meeting, um, so I missed a bunch of it. Um, but you got a physical though, didn't you? <laughs> um, yes, 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 I do. Did it make it home? Yes. Good. Yep. Yes, yes. I should do something with that. Um, yeah, no, I'm glad to see that, you know, what you've been doing. I think you know, the best way you, you can sit on the sidelines or, like, get on Twitter and, and, and you know, pontificate or fud or, you know, shout. Or you could dig in and see what you can make out of it, right? Um, AI is coming. Blockchain is coming. The people who are trying to live in, in the system and figure out how best they can do what they do there are going to be the ones that get to shape that system, right? So keep it up, my good sir. Maybe it's a good someday, time to be alive. <laughs> someday when you move to the metaverse, um, someday, you know, when you're, or maybe, maybe because, you know, all the really famous artists, they don't get famous until they're dead. So when you're dead and your house is in the metaverse, um, I'll we'll be clamoring to live next to JC Matias, um, art gallery, residence or whatever. Um, yeah, looking forward to stuff like that. Yeah, we, we don't want him dead. We don't want him cutting an ear off, any of that stuff. You know, we, we went a, a fully whole and uh, keep creating that. <laughs> Charles is going to message you one day, Jason, and he's going to say, do you want to become immortal with me? And uh... <laughs> Don't do <laughs> he, it. He has he has one of those one of 100 that I gave out at CNFTCon. So he, he told um, someone that I know that he wants to build the piece that I gave him. So... We're, we're, I'm waiting to see if that happens on his property. I have oh, a floating wow. tree building. Uh, but, he says it, but then I went and I said hi to him so. in, uh, in Switzerland, and he, was, he didn't recognize me with a piece, so, but he was also drunk, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I, got, I, I really got to go. I have like a quarter mile to walk so I can get to scope, and I need to go do a thing or two. So um, please reach out. If you collect a piece, uh, let me know. Um, I might have something for you. And... Uh, and yeah, I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it, man. Well, thanks for coming through. Well, folks, um, oh, I was going to say something random. Uh, oh, crap. I knew I should have written it down. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> it was Stephanie. so good. We're Stephanie it was right so now. Good. She's just it was was so it about good. immortality? No, but it was about something Jason said. Uh oh. And it was a tangent. That's why I didn't blurt it out. Anyways, carry on. Uh, we'll hang out for a few more minutes. Um, what, what, what about you, Lido? Do you want to? Do you want to be immortal? Do you want whatever? I do not want to be immortal unless it's no. digital. Oh, no? oh, you want to be digitally immortal? Do you want to be? Yes. Uh, do you want your DNA to be on the blockchain so you can just? No, yeah. no, not even that. When they can capture my neural network, like my brainwave, and like transfer that to the to some digital thing, yeah, um, that's what I want to be when my body starts failing. Can I ask you a question? Yes. If you went into a, a portal and you came out on the other side of the portal, and this portal deatomized you, it's essentially just killed you where you are. And then reatomized you in like a 3D printer with all your memories and brain waves, etc. Are you still the same person? Uh, no. I mean, there's so, a famous quote that the okay. no. Oh, what is it about stepping into the river? Uh, um, that's the yeah, question. Yeah, you're not the same person. Do your do your memories are are your memories of yourself and your experiences? Is that your soul versus is a soul separate? Right. So yeah, that's a toughie. Is that what is that what is that what you're going with this pyro? Or is, is Blackjack going this own Blackjack thing now? Well, Blackjack and I are very similar with the way we associate many things. So. <laughs> we are. We are. I vibe, I vibe with uh, uh Pyro, that's for sure. <laughs> nice. Well I mean 
The soul is not immutable. Are you guys saying that the soul is immutable? Oh, here we go. So, uh, <laughs> this is a deep so subject. So, the brainwave is not immutable uh, and be, could be recreated, right? Uh, and you go into this portal, maybe it's Mars. Is, is it ge- like, are we creating like a, a personal genocide when we go into this, this, this portal that just like takes out your brain waves or, or takes out your, your current body and recreate it? So oh, yeah, got- I, find a, I find a quote. The quote is no man ever steps into the same river twice. Right. Like, ever? I think, yeah, <laughs> ever. <laughs> if, if, uh, if, uh, and then the rest of that statement is for it is not the same river and he is not the same man, right? Ah, I mean, okay. this, <laughs> this, this goes back to, um, Schrodinger's cat or whatever the philosophy thinks. Just by observing a thing changes the thing. Just, just by interacting with it. You are by definition different now. You're not the same person as before you interacted with it. Right. And the experiences of a human as it travels through life, each time it changes, each moment it's changed. So each time you step into the river, you are not the same person stepping into that river. Makes sense. Nor is it the same river because just by you stepping into the river, it changes the river. And I think that change that change goes all the way back down to what whatever it is. Whatever the construct is for his soul, right? So when I said, is the soul mutable or immutable? I don't think it's immutable, right? Because if, if everything we do emanates from our soul, that's, I think that change also affects our soul as well, whatever that is. Yeah, I truly believe that if you, if you understand what's called the universal flow, and if anybody doesn't understand that, you look it up. Um, This is something that will allow you to be a part of something much bigger than yourself and lose the the ego or the identity of ego surrounding that. And then from there, experiences become so much different than what they really are and uh, begin to enjoy life so much more. So it's absolutely amazing. But um, I digress. So you would be okay with going in a portal and killing yourself? Um, yes. When I'm, when I'm when I'm done with this body. So it's got to be at the moment that you're ready to be done with the body. Is that it? It doesn't have to be last minute. It's like you know, if I if I if I can't walk a block anymore, I don't know, whatever. If I can't even like boil eggs. I'm, well, I, I, so I would gladly go to the that, office and go through the portal. Let's I guess say that you've already uh, kept that in mind, right? So that when the mind is still vital and is capable of being able to be downloaded at its peak, whatever age you're at, that you feel that that that's where you're at, then from there you could basically save it like a file, and then you know re-upload it into the you know the, the new body after it gets through the portal. I mean, yeah. Just so you know, 20 people just left the space as you started talking about all this portal and and um, <laughs> put out the ministry shit. <laughs> but let's go to Godraj. What's up, Godraj? Sweet. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to caution everybody against bridges. Um, you know, your mind can get lost if you cross the bridge uh, to whatever this other um, this thing is. And also, are you guys microdosing now or what? Like, what is what is this? I know, right? I came up here just to be like, what is going on? So what you're saying is, don't use the Nomad Bridge for your transfer into 3D. Got it. Okay, very good. Oh man. We what is going on, Jenny? What just what just watching something? I'm just I'm like dropping off my friend at the airport. And she's like, is this crypto? And I was like, mm, I think so. <laughs> so she got out of the car and I'm like, I'm going to come up here and see what's going on with these guys. I just, I kind of joined in at the end of Jason's um, thing, but I couldn't speak before. Shout out to Jason. Um, 
great artists. So check them out if you're in Miami doing Art Basel. There's other people there too. I think Clays are there. Who else is there? Well, Jenny, it's Pyro's fault, just so you know. He's the one who brought her. It's your <laughs> fault. It's always your fault, Blood Dog. Like Okay, I'll take it. Fine, I'll take the blame. Whatever. I was I'm the co host. I could redirect at any time. I, I chose not to. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Hey, I did. I did introduce the banter space and said people could come up and banter for a few minutes, and this is what we came up with. So, no, it's actually me. cool. Oh, I, I like the <laughs> that's that's very true about the no man steps in the same river twice. I, I agree with that. Love it. Hold on. I set him. I set him up for that. I set him up for that. I just wanted to. I think the follow up question that I wanted was if Charles Hoskinson asked you, Lido. Um, if you wanted to be, uh, you know, um, uh, immortal, would you do it? And then, so, you know, that was, that, that was, so that the, was the cool. thing with where I'm coming from, part of it too, is just the cynicism that humans abuse shit if they, if it costs nothing. Um, right. If, if you don't, if, and if there's no scarcity, like if we were immortal, the earth would go to, would go to shit very, very fast. Right. Um, like all of the good decisions we've made so far has been driven by the fact that we are not immortal, um, right? And, and um, there's scarcity and we have a drive to do something. Leave a legacy, right? Do legacy this before I'm 60 and can't work anymore. Those yes. kinds of things. All of that goes away. <laughs> the legacy immortality, personally. What you leave behind to those, and it's not about personal things or, or objects. It's about yes, the sir, impact you've had on people's oh, lives. Yeah. You know, surrounding. You got really care of him. We can hear you. Rudd. Yeah, but sometimes those personal things carry that same energy, and preserving those personal things help preserve the energy as well. True That's that. CJ. What's up, Good yeah. Rush? What? Oh, sorry, man. I thought I was muted. Okay. No, nope, you're not you, me. You asked, oh, right. So, you know, just to put a cap on the trash thing, and then I think maybe, um, oh, it's only 1030. Um, to put a cap on the charge thing, right? The day Charles becomes immortal, that's the day uh, Cardano's going to go to shit. Well, as long as Putin doesn't become immortal, I'm fine. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with Jesus too, the project and Cardano, like uh, from the... Uh, Jesse, it's like a, a really great illustrator. He's like part of like the the Midnight Gospel and Adventure, T Adventure Time. He's doing his own project in Cardano called Jesus Two, and it's a little controversial for some people, but it's actually really cool when you learn what it's about. And it was about his has he he kind of went through a time in his life that he still kind of goes through it, but his way to kind of uh, process that was the fear of dying, right and he just kind of started thinking, imagining a world where we could not die. And that's what Jesus 2 is about. It's about a world where, you know, it's a, nobody can die and how it just becomes a living hell. So it's, it's, it's a pretty cool story regarding that. So right. I want to have, I wanna have tenden tangential um, familiarity with Jesus 2. And I was, I, I was on the cinema uh, real talk space the other day when he was talking about the project. Um, yeah, but are we all immortal anyway? You know, like, we, depending on what philosophy you subscribe to or religion or whatever, you know, we, we came from dust and we'll go to dust or we came from, you know, space, space Stardust. particles, yeah, space dust, and we'll go back to space dust, <laughs> right? Um, and the whole thing that, you know, the whole matter thing that you can't really destroy matter. It just changes shape and form. Um, so nobody's dying anyway. I guess you're right. I mean, we transform, right? But I guess we die in one form and reborn in another. That's different ways, different ways of looking at it, I guess. It's to each their own. You know, that's what I always say. This, this, that's my, that's my famous model. Uh, you know, it's, 
It did you mess that up? Did you? <laughs> to each their own. Is that a pyro quote? That's a pyro quote. Uh, to each their own. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's like, uh, as a Yugian, I believe it doesn't matter if or, you know, it doesn't matter if or when or how. Um, it just matters, you know, uh, about the archetypical nature of what you want to believe in. And, uh, and then you can leave it at that. Wow. What did they talk about in the ministry last night or two nights ago? What are you going to say, Jenny? I was just going to say that was your light a minute. <laughs> Brought to you by Red Evil coming in August in Colorado. Woohoo! August. Co- well, Even less just time gave to up wait. Where it's going to be. Is it, we going back to the Gaylord? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> if we do, I'll definitely bring the family. I have a feeling. I have, I have a distinct feeling. Hey, uh, so did you mention about your uh, your little alpha having a token and being sent in Lido yet? No, why don't you go ahead and mention it? So for any of you who didn't hear it earlier this morning, uh, if you go on a Tosi drop and you're staked a Lido, there's probably other stake pools as well. Uh, you'll have to figure that out on your own. I just know with Lido, once you go in there, it'll identify that you're staked to Lido when you connect your wallet. And then from there, uh, you send two ADA, you get 1.45 back or something like that. And then you get five ND token along with whatever else, uh, you know, Hosky, I think, or whatever else that uh, you might be uh, available to get. So that is a thing. And you got to go on to Tosi Drop in order to do that. And how does Dusty Drop work? It's similar to Drip Drops, except that you you can do it the way you would normally do it with Drip Drops, where you go in, put in your address, send the amount, the specific amount of ADA to that particular wallet, uh, that receive address, and then from there they send you the tokens that you've chosen. Uh, Tosi does it that way, and or there is a connect at the top, and then from there you can just send uh, the I did it through my ledger, and uh, you can send it through that way, and from there you will receive the tokens. Uh, so they have it both ways. Cool. Hold on. Yeah, just... Do I have to put in an email address? No email address. <laughs> are you are you mocking me, TCT? You are going to have to put in your favorite color, uh, Tom. So there's that. But th- other than that, it's no big deal. You, know? you get a choice to answer any two of three hard questions. By the way, if you if you ever did sign up for any of the Lido things, the email address is optional. It's either email address or stick address. Where did this dog go? Yep, that's why you don't have my email address. And that's why I <laughs> love using LidoNation.com. Why does everybody so, like, don't you have, like, email addresses you use for shit like this? <laughs> what they ask you for them so you don't have to like give out your email address that you don't want to give out no because i've done that and then it somehow turns into a real email account so now i have like five emails <laughs> yeah i see what you mean and i use all of them i have that same issue but then it turns into a real, real email as well and i gotta monitor it yeah it sucks i don't want to have another one forget it i've been I mean, trying to get rid of my I've been trying to get rid of one particular email I've had for over a decade, but I, I can't because it's just really easy for me to, uh, to, to, to use it. So it's <laughs> I have like thousands of emails uh, that I haven't. Like, but you guys don't think we're going to have the same problem with a dr- Like we act like we're not going to have the same issue with wallets. I mean, you haven't um, how many wallets I have. If I have to like, oh, remember which one wa- I already have that problem. That people are like, oh, just use the wallet that you use for this. I was like, I don't know which wallet that was. I have a shitload of wallets. So isn't that like Jenny, I don't you do know. what I do. <laughs> you you take the wallet and then the name of the wallet, you add like I was a part of Maladex's, you know, ISPO. So this I put Mal in there or you know, whatever the case may be. If I got the aqua farmer in that one and for having to do with uh, genius, uh, 
it has aqua in there. So I know where the hell it's at. And I only got like five or six wallets. So I don't go any further than uh, that. No, I, dude, I have like, I have like 37 wallets. Okay? No, that's crazy. Yes. And then there's the wallets that I don't use anymore. So there's like, you know, I, to me, I just feel like eventually you might – People migrate from a wallet to another wallet, and, and it'll happen so many times, and they're like, oh, I don't remember which wallet I use, just like you don't remember which email you use. So we're kind of like back to square one in that regards. I mean, you're I don't think that app. solves that problem. You're going to need an app for your wallets. <laughs> and I have them labeled, and I have my stuff, and NAMI does a pretty good job for a lot of them. It's like, you know, you name it, and it's just really cute. And, and I have my bookmarks, and I, I mean, and I have different, different, um, uh, you know, throw different uh, ADA handles in them that makes it easy for me to access them and all that good stuff. But in the end, if I mint with something, sometimes I don't remember. I use certain ones for minting, but I still I keep adding addresses and then I don't remember. I mean, the other day, some some project was like, oh, yeah, the, the email, the, the wallet that you used to mint this thing. I was like, that was like seven months ago. I don't, I don't remember which wallet I used. So it's like, oh, well, maybe you can do this and maybe check. And it's, I don't know. It's just always, I, I feel like this is crazy non problems. But if we go back to like having to remember an email, I think we're going to end up in the same place with the wallets. That's just all I'm trying to say, you know? Well, I will say this if you are connected to Lido Nation and you're a delegator, definitely don't forget your wallet. Don't change your silly nailie. Um, because we will soon be entering into our releasing our, our engage to earn things. Um, I was just outside playing with the dog, so I'm out of breath. But um, uh, wallet, yeah, right. One of the things that will will be happening is this multiplier based off of your loyalty, right? The number of epochs that you had, and number of ADA delegated to Lido, um, will earn you a multiplier for how much you get, right? So Is that earn, goes, the, the earn thing connected to that thing that you did for the proof of attendance? That was pretty. Yeah, cool. Yeah, some of all that stuff, right? Yeah, I've been putting more work into that. Um. Well, close to 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 start to start trickling those out, right? Um, so if the public is getting, you know, a million eight, a million hashti or something, you might get a million and a half, right? Or two million, depending on what your multiplier is. Those kinds of things. Um, so hang on to oh, your you wallet. Oh, you can earn multipliers. Ooh, yes. I yes. like yes. that. But, uh, Always remember, Hosky is going to zero, so you know, don't get your hopes up. So, <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be Ada, it could be Hosky. I've got a shit ton of NFT Maker Pro tokens. Um, I've got I, I some. Was channeling, I was channeling Brian right there. I want to make sure, you know. I don't know. I've got some <laughs> clap. You remember that? Oh, oh I remember that. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Shout out to Karma. <laughs> yeah, so got a few things, and I. I I really DJ into DeFi. I've I I one point I had like a dozen farms going. Um, so time to give all that shit away. What's up? You're a mad man. That's what you are. Uh, uh, you know, I'm one of those people. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I'm one of those people who moves around from state pool to state pool, and so I do kind of run into that problem occasionally. And I just wanted to point out that if you use Eternal, it does show your stake history. Uh, so you can figure out which wallet was delegated to which pool at what time and blah, 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 all that. Now, I don't think NAMI shows that stuff, but uh, if you want to uh, restore your wallets in Eternal, you'll be able to see all of it. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. So I've just consolidated my farms into Hosky, <laughs> which is pretty good. And hmm, that's it right now, Hosky. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I should get to I should get to doing some fiat mining. What do you guys think? Yeah, you gotta pay the bills. You gotta get more tokens. Hey, oh, do you, do we so, know who we have tomorrow? Do we have a guest tomorrow? Yeah, fiat mining's overrated. Who's the guest for tomorrow? Check. 
Great question. Sometimes, Jenny, I think you think we run a professional Twitter space around here. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I know we do. We're just like very uh, particular and we're, we're redefining what professionalism looks like. Oh, oh, oh. So we have Team Canada. Is that is that their real name? Tim Canada. Team Canada. I don't know, I guess. Oh, um, it's welcome the Team wizard Canada. team. It's a, oh, and it's on book.io. Well, there you go. Come check it nice. out tomorrow. So... We've got the wizard team from Canada. And then we also have Astora Dow. Web3 brand built on Solana. Oh, ho, ho. nice. Well, there you go. What? Okay, like say that again, please. I want. Well, the thing that says tell us about your project. Yeah. The response was Web three built on Solana and expanding into a cross chain audience. There you go. Sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah. So come check it out. We got a book that book that I owe. Um, Wizardy story. Um, and we've got. A cross chain project coming from Solana. And it's a DAO. That's the and, show uh, tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to do a short chill. Uh, just having to do with the ambassador program for me, Hen. Uh, so if anybody's interested, you can hit up either me or Pyro. Uh, and we will take care of you on information surrounding the ambassador program, which, by the way, is a paid position. Oh, okay. Well, check it out. Check it out. Um, Ren isn't here anymore. Um, he had a question, but I'll save it for tomorrow. He can ask Ren himself. Apparently, his driveway is wrecked. Sounds serious. But folks, you have been listening to Cordano over coffee. We are here Monday to Friday. 2.30 p.m. UTC for two hours with two 25 minutes get slots and a lot of community discussions, Q&A, um, open topics. On Monday, we don't have guests. We keep the whole two hour just to hang and chat. Um, it's a good time if you have someone new to Cardano to invite them to come and ask a bunch of questions. Um, yeah. Your hosts are Hero Pool, Epoch, Lido Nation, TCT, Jenny Brito, Tia Jenny, as Big Joe calls her, Black Jock, and Always Chilling, 